Hello Alive Kids, Olive here and I hope you're well and I hope you're good. I have missed you guys all so much and if you're from Alive Lincoln, I hope you still remember me. I hope you've not forgotten my face. I miss your faces so much, I jumped right at the opportunity to read you a bedtime story. I've got with me a special friend to help me do that tonight. His name's TK. Hi. What's that? He looks familiar. Oh, of course, of course. I remember I gave him to a special friend of mine to use in telling you a bedtime story along with someone else. Yes, yes, I do remember that. Well, while me and TK go ahead and settle down ready for tonight's bedtime story, I wonder if you're comfy and cozy. Are you? If not, go ahead and get comfortable. Grab anything you need to get comfortable. I've got my hot cup of hot chocolate. <laughs> I've got my hot cup of hot chocolate. I always love a good hot hot cup. I always love a good hot cup of hot chocolate before bed. So once you get settled down, let's begin. Tonight's bedtime story can be found in the book of Daniel in the Bible, chapter 3. And in our bedtime story tonight, we are going to come across something very hot, much hotter than a hot cup of hot chocolate. But unfortunately, not for the best of reasons. So once upon a time, there lived a king whose name was King Nebuchadnezzar. This king was the king of a place called Babylon. One day, King Nebuchadnezzar came to Jerusalem for battle and he won. He was a great and mighty king and he knew it and he made sure everybody knew it. After capturing Jerusalem, he ordered for some of the best people to be brought back to Babylon with him. Among these best people were four men called Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah. On returning to Babylon, because their names weren't so Babylonian, their names were giving glory to God and not to the gods of the Babylonians. The men had their names changed. Daniel became Belteshazzar, Hananiah became Shadrach, Mishael became Meshach, and Azariah became Abednego. I wonder if any of these names sound familiar to you alive kids. Now, after some time had passed, Daniel, I mean, Belteshazzar, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were promoted by the king after Daniel amazingly interpreted the king's dream with God's help, of course. There came a time when the king King Nebuchadnezzar made an image out of gold, a golden statue. Now this golden statue was no ordinary statue. Mm -mm. It was absolutely humongous. It was over 27 meters tall. Now, to put that into some context, think of a house, maybe your house, with up, upstairs and downstairs. That's high enough already, isn't it? But then put four more of those houses on top of your house. Yep, pretty high up it was. And it was over 2.7 meters wide. Now I want you to look from the floor to the ceiling. Look to the floor, look to the ceiling. That's pretty high up, isn't it, Alive Kids? Yes, now his statue was wider than that. So pretty big. Once the statue was all set up, he ordered for all the people of Babylon to be gathered for the dedication of his statue. It was gonna have a big presentation. So all the people gathered upon the order of the king. Once all gathered, the king's herald read the king's orders out loud. It read a little like this. 
You are commanded, O people, nations and languages, that when you hear the sound of the musical instruments, you are to fall down and worship the golden statue that the king has set up. Whoever does not do so will immediately be thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. So then the musicians went ahead to play their instruments and all kinds of music. And once the people heard it, they all fell down and worshipped the king's golden statue. All except three. Can you guess who these three men were? Of course. They were three of our four men from Jerusalem. It was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, a certain few Babylonians saw them refusing to bow down to the king's golden statue, and they went straight away to report it to the king. O oh, king, live forever, they said. You, O oh, king, made an order that everyone who hears the sound of all the musical instruments and all kinds of music must fall down and worship your golden statue. You also said that if anyone doesn't, they will be thrown into a burning, fiery furnace. Well, O oh, king, those men that you brought back from Jerusalem and you promoted in Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, they have refused to serve your gods. But not just that, they have also refused to bow down and worship your golden statue. They just won't do it. The king was furious and he ordered his servants to bring Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego before him. When they came, the king asked them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, that you have refused to serve my gods or worship my golden statue? Silence. Well, now in my presence, once you hear all the musical instruments and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship my statue. If you do not do so, I will have you all thrown immediately into a burning, fiery furnace. Again, I say, bow down before my statue and you'll live or refuse and you will die in the fire. Who is the God who will save you from my hand? Wow, what a tough situation the men found themselves in. Don't you think? I do. So anyway, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego responded saying, Oh Nebuchadnezzar, we don't have anything to say to you because our God who we serve is able to deliver us from your burning fiery furnace. But even if he doesn't, we want you to know that we will not serve your gods and we will not bow down and worship your golden statue all the bravery wow now the king was already furious but this time he was fuming everyone could see it in his face out of his great anger and his fury he ordered his servant to turn the fiery furnace up seven times hotter than it already was. Gosh, can you imagine that? I can almost feel the heat from here. <sighs> if I were there, I'd probably be telling Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego to please change their mind because the king is being very serious and boy is that fiery furnace hot. But of course, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego were not going to change their minds. So unfortunately for them, the king ordered his mighty men to tie them all up in their clothes and throw them into the burning fiery furnace. Immediately, the mighty men did what the king had asked. 
No one, not even mighty men, would want to be in the king's bad books. He was so angry he could have them killed if they disobeyed him. After tying them all up, they went down to throw them into the seven times hotter, burning, fiery furnace. But because the king's order was so urgent and the furnace was so hot, the fire killed the mighty men that threw them into the fiery furnace. Oh dear. Now back to Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Surely this was the end of them. They must have fried up in the fire like burnt barbecue meat. Well, that would be a boring end to the story, wouldn't it, Alive Kids? Fortunately, our story doesn't end there. Suddenly, King Nebuchadnezzar rose up quickly. He shouted to his counsellors, Did we not cast three men all tied up into the fire? His counsellors answered, answered him, Yes, you are correct, O king. So, why can I see four men in the middle of the fire? Said the king. They're all free and walking in the fire. They don't look hurt at all. And the fourth man doesn't even look human. He looks like an angel. In utter shock and surprise, the king went close to the door of the furnace and called out loudly, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, come out and come here, O servants of the Most High God. And Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego walked out of the fiery furnace and all of the leaders gathered around them in shock because they found that the fire didn't hurt any part of their bodies, not even a single hair on their head. They didn't even smell like smoke. Then what happened next must have been as bizarre as the miracle that just took place. King Nebuchadnezzar, our pompous and prideful king, who thought he was the greatest, said aloud, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him and refused to worship my golden statue because they only worship their God. Today I decree, anyone who speaks anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego shall be put to death because there is no other God like him who can rescue in this way. Then after, King Nebuchadnezzar and all his people went ahead to give God praise. Isn't that amazing? How's that for a great ending? Isn't it amazing at Life Kids that we have a God who is so powerful? A God who can make fire lose all its heat. A God who is so faithful, a God who never leaves or forsakes his people, but instead a God who protects his people from harm. God promises to never leave you alive. Kids, I want you to remember this. So if you ever happen to find yourself facing a really difficult situation, something like Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego's, I want you to know that you can be sure that God sees you, God hears you. If you just tell him in prayer, let him know and he will surely come to your rescue. He promises to come to your rescue. Well, I hope you enjoyed this bedtime story and I hope you're ready for bed. I sure am ready to get some rest soon. But before we sleep, I just say a quick prayer for us and if you just join with me and get into any position you want to get into for prayer let's pray thank you God that you never leave or forsake us but instead you are always with us thank you God that you watch over us and you always come to our rescue 
Thank you, God, for your great love and your great power. As we sleep, dear Lord, would you watch over us? Would you keep us safe? Us and all our families, friends and loved ones too. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Thank you so much for tuning in for tonight's Bedtime Story Alive, kids. I miss you all so much and I really do hope I'll see you soon. See you next time. Bye. Bye.